I am going to read from my novel, and um, it's about sisters. They're from Kerala, India. Kerala is a state on the southwestern tip of India, right on the coast. And um, their names are Anju and Lino. And Anju is the younger sister, and she's very ambitious and, and really smart in school. Um, and she's applied to this scholarship to study in New York City. And the older sister's name is Lino, and she's kind of, you know, not considered as intelligent. She drops out of school, um, but she's a budding artist, and she has a sketchbook that she's filled with drawings, and she's kind of, she's, um, she's really talented in that way. And the one painting that's hanging in their house that she's really proud of is, is they call the Taylor's painting. Um, I'm just telling you all these things to set up the scene I'm about to read, which is a scene in Kerala early in the book. And this is the scene where, you know, Anju has applied for the scholarship, she, and she gets an interview with, uh, with a teacher from America named Miss Schimpf. And so Miss Schimpf comes to their house, it's a big deal, and they're all very nervous. And um, so that's, that's what I'm about to read. But the other thing, the only other thing you need to know is that they're raised by their grandmother. Uh, who they call Amachi and their, their father. So here we go. Lino can hardly believe it. Anju's interview is going terribly wrong. From behind the curtain that separates sitting room from kitchen, Lino spies as Anju fumbles over her English, continually asking for questions to be repeated. Over and over, Miss Schimpf reassures her that everything is okay, that they are just having a chat. So what makes you different from all the other candidates out there, Miss Schimpf asks. What makes you stand out? Anju crosses and uncrosses her ankles. An errant piece of string is caught in the hair at her temple, resembling a patch of premature gray among the black. Her voice issues forth in robotic monotone. I have made excellent marks in all exams and have made top rank in all subjects, such as in maths and English. Despite her smile, Miss Schimpf's tentative tone expresses that the question has yet to be answered properly. Yes, it's amazing how accomplished all of you are, the candidates, I mean. But I guess what I mean is, what makes you unique? You know that word, unique? You, Anju says, neek? Yes, exactly. What is it about your personality, not just your awards and your grades, that makes you unique, different, special? A short but torturous silence as Anju waits, leaning forward, straining her neck as if to peer into Miss Schimpf's mouth where the definition of unique lies. She sits back and takes a sip of her tang, and then the final blow. Just as she blurts the first words of her answer, I think, out comes a spray of spittled tang onto the back of Miss Schimpf's hand. Oh, Miss Schimpf gives a small, tense laugh. Anju mumbles sorry over and over, attempting to wipe the tang-laden hand with her own. It's all right, it's all right, let's just take a deep breath. Lino takes a deep breath. Last Sunday, she woke from a dream wherein Anju failed her interview, a dream whose aftertaste in the morning was strangely sweet. She both wanted Anju to go and wanted her to fail, not only to fail, but to know the lasting heaviness of failure. Guilt-ridden, Lino spent an hour with Amachi's prayer book, sum summoning up long, sorrowful prayers, and for the rest of the day, she went on with her chores, taking special care when ironing her sister's school blouse. And now, her prayers have been answered with this. Get away from there, Amachi whispers, then begs, what is happening, what? They are almost finished, Lino says. Lino sits on the back step just as Rapai's rooster struts into the yard, eyeing her as if she poses some sort of challenge. She hates Rapai's rooster. It boasts all the lesser qualities of its owner, knotty legs, a bulky middle, pecking after ladies in a way that sends them skittering off. Rapai lives in the house behind theirs. She can see him gawking from his doorway, craning his neck. He wears his usual off-yellow munda tied far too high above his knees, exposing thighs barely wider than his calves and a towel over his shoulder. Eddie Lino, he yells from the doorway, did she get it? 
In an effort to quiet him, Lino shakes her head furiously, waves her hand, no. Through the space between Rapai's house and an adjacent banana tree, she can see another Ola roof and another farther back, all of these and more homes making up Kumaregam, a village at the delta of the Minachil River, a dot not even mapped on a globe, unlike New York, which seems almost a nation unto itself. The whole family was assuming that Anju would win the award and go traipsing off to that glittering place like Raj Kapoor, whistling with her stick and bundle as she sang her way into the Technicolor Hills. Lino even allowed herself to fantasize that she might follow one or two years from now, but true life, hers in particular, will require far less color, very little imagination. She wonders sometimes, not often, what it would be like to be married to a man like Rapai, someone whose matinal nose-blowing can be heard from the next house over. Maybe, after a while, the wife's subtle disgust settles to the bottom of her being, like a sediment, allowing her to wash his underwear, hang his sheddy on the line, and spread tiger balm across the shallow basin of his chest without dread, without any feeling at all.